This channel is part of the History Hit Network. This is Elmore Court in Gloucestershire, a £25 million estate that's been in the Guy's family for 750 years. 37-year-old Anselm Guy's has just inherited it, but he's got no money and the house is a nightmare of disrepair, decaying outbuildings and soaring maintenance costs he can't afford. Can businesswoman Ruth Watson rescue this national treasure from potential ruin. This place is actually, in many respects, a tip. I think this is you going back to the womb. It's not haunted in any way, but I think it would be quite a problem. Are they hippies, your friends? Everything legal, I hope. Crikey, the house is huge and I'm on my own. Oh, fuck it, it's all a mess. Elmore Court is a Grade II listed mansion in the Cotswolds, the centrepiece of a £25 million estate. But behind the beautiful facade, whole wings are crumbling. The bedrooms and bathrooms are from a bygone era, and the disused rooms are crammed with junk. It costs £40,000 a year just to pay the basic bills here, and there's no money to repair anything. Elmore has been the seat of the Guy's family since 1262, and the latest owner in this long line is Anselm Guy's. If anything goes wrong, we haven't got any surplus cash, and I'm not, I'm not at all rich. And sometimes it does feel a bit too much. It's like, oh my god. Anselm must transform the fortunes of this monster house, but he's ill-equipped for the task. I mean, to be honest, my 20s, I, I wasn't really applying myself. When I left school, I got very into dance music and sort of put on parties, DJs, got into writing music, having fun rather than working hard. Anselm inherited Elmore from his uncle, Sir John Guise, who died unexpectedly last year. Uncle John disapproved of his DJ nephew's lifestyle and doubted his ability to run the family house. My uncle was quite old-fashioned and I maybe didn't turn into the, quite the same sort of person that he wanted me to get turned into, so we didn't really see eye to eye. It's up to Anselm to prove Uncle John wrong. He's called on Ruth Watson to help. I love country houses. They're a quintessential part of the British landscape, but they're in real danger. And unless their owners wake up and start running them like businesses, they're gonna be snapped up by foreign oligarchs who won't give a damn about chucking out the history and bringing in the gold taps. Self-made businesswoman Ruth owns a hotel and restaurant empire in Suffolk. She's turned around the fortunes of numerous crumbling stately homes, including Hintlesham Hall, which she bought for 400,000 and sold for nine million pounds six years later. Ruth's quest is to save these houses for the nation. Today, she's on her way to Elmore. Hello, How hi. You and some guys. Very good nice to meet you. It's a fabulous house. Can Isn't I it? How's your journey? Yeah, not so bad at all. In a few days' time, Ruth will give Anselm her plan on how to save Elmore. History Hit is a streaming platform that is just for history fans, with fantastic documentaries covering fascinating figures and moments in history from all over the world. We've got unrivaled access to the world's leading historians, with hundreds of documentaries featuring everything from Boudicca to the British royal family. We're committed to bringing history fans award-winning documentaries and podcasts that you cannot find anywhere else. Sign up now for a free trial, and real royalty fans get 50% off their first three months. Just be sure to use code REALROYALTY at checkout. But first, she needs to learn more about the house and its owner. Her investigative tour starts with the grand rooms. Oh, my word. The only part of the house kept in a better state of repair. The Great Hall. The Great Hall, indeed, yeah. Which is the oldest part of the house. 
Some slightly scary colour schemes going on in the ceiling and the <laughs> fireplace. Have, have you got a lot of dulux somewhere in the back? Um, it's not the most beautiful, harmonious set of colours up there, is yes, it? Yes, it's, it's been discussed. And who's the bust of? My late uncle. From whom I inherited. He looks rather stern. He's keeping an army. And he's not the only one. Upstairs, Anselm's parents, Sir Jamie and Lady Carol, are lodging with him. And in the dining room, portraits of his predecessors cover every wall. So, all these chaps are your ancestors and who you've got to live up to, is yes. that right? Everyone in here is an ancestor. And who's this buffoon here? Because he looks very foppish. Um, I wouldn't want him as my ancestor, that one, I have to tell you. He kind of fancies himself a bit, doesn't he? He does indeed. There's another picture of him over there as well, so... Oh, um. right, yeah. So, who's this rather well-fed, complacent-looking chap? That is Barclay, guys. He's the, um, he's the chap who wants to be a politician and, and spent... Most of the money, thankfully not so all the money. So he squandered the family fortune? He squandered a hell of a lot of it, yes. He looked like he ate it, most uh, of it. <laughs> now Anselm is in charge, he has to save what's left of the guy's legacy. This sums up the whole, if you like, problem, isn't it, really? Because you have got this fantastic house you've inherited, but you've also inherited all these ancestors looking over your shoulders. And, yeah, you know, I mean, there's definitely, you know, I, I do feel the pressure of it. And, you know, and I, I, I want to respect it, but I don't want it to control... Smother you. No, exactly. Yeah. And, it's, and it's, it's, it's quite a head fry. The only way to stop Elmore's decay is to create a viable business to cover the huge annual bills and pay for the restoration of the rooms. Anselm already has a few ideas of his own. What I'd really like to do, and this creates something that's very... Um, Positive. I'd, l I'd like to do a pub. Have you? There's, there's no good pubs around here. Have you considered how much it costs to set up a pub from scratch? I've. I have. Yeah. It's and quite a lot. Is... I've got my kind of utopian vision of where it yeah. might end up one day. Yeah. Uh, I'm Mrs. Practical. You do a utopia. And, I'll yeah, do. No, I need, real, I need Mrs. Practical <laughs> to, to, to give me some pointers. Definitely. Yeah. So. Okay. Crikey. You no, know, maybe a bit pie in the sky. I mean, I get the impression that she's quite kind of immediately going to you know, shoot down any silly ideas. Um, she's kind of good, but uh, a bit upset about the pub idea. Unimpressed with Anselm's pub plan, the next morning, Ruth investigates another of his ideas, to set up a cookery school at Elmore. He thinks the disused coach house would make great accommodation for the students, but as ever, there's the small matter of money. So this is the inside. Pretty, um, it's a bit of a mess. Have you considered how much this is going to cost to convert? It's going to cost quite a lot, yeah. Yeah, I think um, we could be sure about that. No, I know. It's, uh, it's in a bit of a state, but, you know, so I think it's got potential. I, 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 absolutely, no doubt about that. Right, and this used to be um, the Elmore School of Dancing studio which you can actually see the old um, <laughs> sign hitch up there. So who, is... who had dance classes? I've, I, funny enough, remember being forced up here as a sort of four-year-old. Really? Yeah, so it was sort of very class. amateur? Very, very amateur, <laughs> yeah. Quite... I think the trouble is people expect a little more nowadays. They do, don't they? I think you're sadly right, yeah. How many people do you think you can house up here, then? Well, maybe 12. So, um, at a squeeze. I think you're being very optimistic to think you could get 12 people into this space, okay. including bathroom facilities. Bathroom facilities, yeah, no, you're, you're, you could be right. Anselm just doesn't have the money to renovate this coach house. Is he overlooking his main asset? Why would you want to make rooms here at huge cost and with great difficulty when you've got stacks of bedrooms in that enormous house? It doesn't make any sense. The only thing I can think is that Anselm is for some reason holding back because he may be frightened about upsetting the ancestors. He's got to get that out of his mind. That is the place to make accommodation for the cookery school. Anselm must make money from Elmore. But is he taking the job seriously enough? What have you been doing to Uncle John? 
I'm loath to say you need to go and see a psychotherapist, but I think you need to actually visit your head. Last year, DJ Anselm Guys inherited the £25 million Elmore Court in Gloucestershire. His 1,200-acre estate includes 16 tenanted cottages and six working farms. This 18-bedroom house was built during the reign of Elizabeth I. The Great Hall features a Tudor mullioned window, embellished with Victorian stained glass crests. Elmore's dining table has been in use since the 1500s. While upstairs, the oak room contains an ornate Elizabethan fireplace and a four-poster bed hand-carved in 1636. The house is a national treasure, but outside the grand rooms, much of it is in disrepair. The burden of saving it has fallen on Anselm's shoulders. Elmore is not just a handsome house, it's a huge estate that's been in the same family for hundreds of years. And the land is tenanted by farmers and cottage owners whose history is inextricably linked with the Guy's family. I must find a way to help Anselm make this house viable, because without a good plan, the livelihood of everybody who lives here is at stake. Businesswoman Ruth Watson is investigating Anselm's idea to run a cookery school at Elmore. She doesn't think he should accommodate students in the coach house, but reinstating the old kitchens for the lessons may have more merit. This is the old kitchens in here. Aha! So what are you thinking about doing in here? Well, I thought that, you know, with the cookery school, you could have units with, you know, a couple of uh, hobs here. I love the way you're getting straight into the detail before you've thought of this structure. Like the stables, the old kitchens are in an appalling state. I have to tell you that most of the things you've shown me have all looked like really scruffy old rooms. Um, where do you live? Have you got something I that's can nicer you. than this? Yeah, well, uh, you know, it's quite a lot of house to keep yeah. pristine. Okay. So, um, yeah, I'll show you. Anselm lives in just two small rooms in a far corner at the top of the house, rarely inhabiting the grandeur downstairs. This is um, my little sort of TV room, which is known oh. as the North Room, but it's been redubbed the Naughty Room. And uh, who dubbed it the Naughty Room? I did when I first got so here. It seems to have stuck. Self-deprecating of you. What, what this really smacks of is somebody escaping the rest of the house. I think this is you going back to the womb. Do you think so? <laughs> Good God! <laughs> <laughs> I hadn't thought about it this being my womb before. <laughs> anyway. With Anselm taking up such a small part of the house, there's plenty of room to put up his parents. Sir so Jamie and Lady Carol are staying in the old nursery while their new house is being built in the village. Ruth wants to know if they have faith in Anselm's ability to make Elmore profitable. Do you think it's uh, somewhat of an unfair burden? I mean, it's a fantastic house, but huge responsibility. I mean, would yes, would I you? Do. I think it's <clears throat> I think it's very tough on him, <clears throat> and I think if he can do it, it'll be amazing. And I think he seems really determined to do it. He cares about the place, and I think he's got our feeling of continuity, yes. wanting to keep things going. Yeah, we've been here for a long time. Yes. We want to stay here. He never lived here as a child. Mm. and I think that makes it much more difficult for him. Ruth spends the rest of the day exploring the house on her own. First up, the Tudor bedrooms, far grander than Anselm's small apartment. That's a very manky lampshade. Every room is filled with family history. But the weight of his ancestry isn't the only thing burdening young Anselm. This house may be jammed with fine antiques and paintings, but it's also jammed with a load of rubbish. Some of it's actually got a value because it's antiquarian crud, but a lot of it's just rubbish. I feel like this whole thing needs an absolute spring clean. Ruth's priority is to generate income. But can a residential cookery school really make enough money to save Elmore? 
The next morning, she visits the nearby Gables School of Cookery to work out what kind of profit Anselm could expect. It really is one of those puddings that you add some cream, some custard. So that's fine. Hello, Fran. Hello. I see you're teaching you how to cheat. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Fran Winston charges £600 per week. Twelve students mean a £30,000 turnover from the four-week course. Even after costs, that's a healthy profit. But are the students happy to pay? Hello, can I interrupt you? Hi. <laughs> Do you think that actually having the longer courses with accommodation available mm -hmm. is, is a real benefit? I think so, yes. I mean, yes, it's more expensive, but you just get to be in the whole atmosphere. You get to be with the people you work with every day, and you get to know them also outside the kitchen. So, and it's just, I don't know, it gives you... Sort a, of total immersion. Yes. Yeah. Using this business model, Anselm could easily turn over £300,000 a year. But Ruth thinks he could make much more. Elmore is in the Cotswolds, which attracts a moneyed crowd. Could Anselm's cookery school accommodation rival the area's best hotels, such as Cotswold House, and charge accordingly? Do you think a place like this that's got this modern style actually will do better than a very boring traditional place nowadays? Definitely. I think everybody that comes has an expectation of that kind of product. So um, certainly the, the young set that come up at the weekends from London, 30 to 40s. And it means, you know, we can charge a certain rate. Um, and By which you mean a little bit more? Perhaps. Yes, definitely. Yeah. Suites here can cost £500 a night. With similar accommodation, Anselm could be looking at a half million pound turnover. Enough to safeguard Elmore's future. For me, this is where Ansem should be going at Elmore. Not just creating a cookery school, but an environment that people really want to go to that's got a lot of pizzazz. After three days at Elmore, it's time for Ruth to tell Anselm how to save his crumbling estate. Hello, Ansem. Good morning. you? Um, pensive. <laughs> you don't own this house. Right. You do own this house, actually, but mentally you don't own no, this house. No, not yet. And it shows in every single thing you do. What you're doing at the moment is you're camping like a student. <laughs> you're camping as if this is somewhere where you've actually got to relinquish it in two minutes because it's not quite real. You are smothered by your ancestors. You are terrified of doing anything that might upset tradition. I'm loath to say you need to go and see a psychotherapist, but I think you need to, <laughs> need to actually really visit your head and say, why am I frightened of being here? I think you're right in saying that I, I'm scared of it, but I think it's, it's like like anyone on, you know, on the edge of a precipice. An estate as big as Elmore should be profitable, but the income from the tenanted farms and cottages barely covers the household bills. Blue-chip accountancy firms, hired by previous generations, are charging handsomely for collecting rents and managing the estate. I think that you could save a lot of money by employing a local accountant and also using somebody on your payroll to actually manage the estate's affairs in the sense of collecting rents and doing things like that. Mm. I think you could actually probably save somewhere between 40 and 60,000 a year. Right. Well, that's a hell of a lot. As well as saving money, Ruth's come up with a novel way to raise money. This place is actually, in many respects, a tip. <laughs> now, Outside the grand rooms, there is the most enormous amount of junk. And I would like to see you clear it all up and get rid of it. But also, you can raise some money. What will happen is that you will employ a local auctioneers. They will come, they will value it, they will say what's worth putting in, what you yeah. actually just need to skip for. I mean, I'm not going to hazard what it's worth, but it's got to be thousands. Yeah. The money Ruth will save and raise could be invested in Anselm's cookery school but she insists he accommodates the students in the main house. I do think that the old kitchen would make a marvellous cookery school. Nice. I think it needs to be obviously completely cleared out and assessed properly, but I think it would make a great 
place. Oh, wow. Fantastic. Mm. Yes. Hang on. There's some reservations. What I want you to consider is actually opening this house up, not just for the accommodation, but this is where I think you can really play to your strengths. It's making this really, really upmarket, cool, modern. It's real cutting edge design. It's not just a another cookery school. But before Anselm can make any real change, he needs to change himself. Every single one of your ancestors has actually done something to this house. It's not a fossil. Whatever you do to this house, you're not going to do anything worse than they've done before. But you've got to believe in it. You've got to believe in yourself, what you can do. And you've got to say that this lot are literally history. It's five weeks since Ruth's visit. Anselm has acted on her advice and brought in auctioneers to value his centuries of clutter. Robin. Yeah, morning. Hello. Right, Robin, this is um, the old kitchen. Anselm hopes the auction of these dusty family relics, like this 19th century mother of pearl sewing box, isn't that lovely, complete with all its fittings as well? Could raise the cash he desperately needs to kickstart his cookery school. And as luck would have it, he's even found a book of Guy's family recipes. That from Ella Guy's 1903. Moist curry. Delicious. Nice. Mm. Very, very wholesome. Yeah. Yeah. You've got to make something from yeah. there, haven't you? Well, yeah, the cabinet yeah. on a stand it would look nice, wouldn't it? Are you going to be, are you going to be doing the cooking? And getting... uh, well, not me directly, but uh, that would be somebody else. But, uh, so, you know, maybe in the future. You could be turning your hand to a bit of cooking, haven't I you? Love, I do like cooking, so, right. so yeah. uh, I just, you know, not that good. Although reviving Ella Guise's spirit at Elmore, Anselm has said farewell to two other relatives. Mum and Dad have moved out now. They've gone down to their, their new house, um, which is lovely. And uh, I, I mean that in both ways. It's quite nice to have this place to myself. And it's quite nice for them to be in their new house. There was a bit of time when they first, when they fir when they first left that I, it, suddenly it was like, crikey, the house is huge and I'm on my own. It's not haunted in any way, but I think it would be quite, uh, quite a problem and, and, and lonely, I imagine. I'm quite looking forward to now really getting to use it properly and uh, not have to worry what, about what they think about <coughs> my shenanigans. So it's all good. I'm quite looking forward to having some, you know, some proper action here. And to help with the action, Anselm has invited two friends he met at a dance festival to reinstate the Victorian kitchen gardens in return for bed and board. He's also drafted in his sister-in-law, Kate, who teaches at a nearby cookery school to advise him on his plans. This was once a kitchen garden and... Oh, it's just beautiful. Look at that. I think he's got to learn a bit about gardening. That takes quite a lot of doing and it has to be kept in good order, of course. But um, he'll learn as time goes by. I expect he'll do a bit of delegating. Isn't it wonderful? You've got a blank canvas here. about three months since I last came down to Elmore and saw Anselm, and in between times his parents have moved out. So I'm not only interested to see how he's getting on with the cookery school plans, I want to see how he's living in the house. Has he got rid of all that junk and that detritus? Has he made Elmore his own? Good to see you. I'm fine. How are you? Very good. Very good indeed. Uh, what have you been doing to Uncle John? Ah, uh, yes, I forgot that was there. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, that was, uh, I think that was the weekend just gone. So times have changed. He's no longer somebody who you revere and are frightened of. <laughs> um, well, I, I think he's quite happy there. So yeah. this room looks pretty, well, I was going to say pretty much the same, except we seem to have a greenhouse developed. Yeah, well, I've, well, I've got some friends um, making me a kitchen garden, and uh, uh, 
they thought this would be a good place to grow the tomatoes and so forth. Are they hippies, your friends? Hippies? Yeah. Um, uh, uh, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> It sort of seems like a fairly hippie thing to do, to have your plants growing in the window of a room like this. So you've got tomatoes and beans and all sorts of things. Yes. But there's quite Everything a lot. legal, I hope. Of course. <laughs> yeah. Ruth wants evidence that Anselm is taking Elmore's future seriously. So he's hoping his clean-up of the old kitchens will impress her more. Right, so you can see it's um, been cleared out in here. Is that what you call it? Well, you know, Is it, that was, what you it, call was, it was full of stuff. I agree and, that you uh, couldn't walk across the floor, but I hardly call this a complete clear out. I mean, what's all this crap still doing here? Well, we've just, um, you know, it's just uh, that's the debris from the weekend. It's, it's just the beginning of the week. So. What, old fans? <coughs> oh, that's Kettles? Stuff. That's, um, that's, that's what junk. What kind of parties do you have? <laughs> um, uh, quite good ones. <laughs> It was only done on, you know, like three days ago, and there's been a weekend, and it's and um, I've been busy. So uh, you're but being it's... very arsy, Anthony. <laughs> um, what about these things? I mean, these I remember, I think, seeing three months ago, didn't I? Yes. I mean, are you saving them for next Christmas or what? It'll find its way into skip in, in due course, but it's you know, there's a, there's a lot of space in this house, so we're yeah. Sort of... Too as, fucking uh, right as, there is, as, and as... too much fucking junk in this fucking space, too. Sorry, excuse me, I've just ruined that fabulous flower decoration. <laughs> Why am I picking up? Fuck it, it's all a mess. And stay there. Now, honestly, come on, Anderson. Mm. Just get it done. Elmore needs to become a profitable business to survive. But will Anselm face up to his responsibilities? You have lived your life in a fairly unstructured way. That's and true. this is going to be a huge culture change for you. It really is. Last year, DJ Anselm Guise inherited Elmore Court, the Guise family seat of nearly eight centuries. He's asked businesswoman Ruth Watson to help safeguard his inheritance. And to do this, they're planning a residential cookery school. Despite Ruth's insistence that Anselm take full ownership of the house, he's still living in just his small corner apartment and has actually moved even more stuff in. Anselm, is it going to be a nine-month gestation period before you leave the womb, or could we do it more quickly? <laughs> Um, it's going to take as long as it takes, but I mean, if you know, I mean, my plan is is that. So you're going to have an elephant's gestation period. It, it might be. It could Rather be. Than it, human it, one. It, it could be a rat. So I don't know. Basically, as soon as it happens, it'll happen. However, Anselm has taken some of Ruth's advice. If you remember, we we talked at um, some length about the estate and the income it produced, and, and I was particularly concerned that your professional fees were really, really high. Yeah. And I felt that you could take back in hand quite a lot of the work and save a, you know, small which, fortune. Which, How's that gone? Which we've done. That's been quite a <laughs> sharp learning curve, but I think we're going to save quite a lot of money off uh, professional fees. At the worst, 20 grand, but hopefully mm. 30 grand or more mm -hmm. a year. Mm. So, it's uh, good. Yeah, no, it's good. Ruth's freed up £30,000 a year, which will help pay for the restoration. She wants Elmore to compete with the Cotswolds' top hotels, so she's brought in Ilse Crawford, the designer behind the stylish Soho House in London and Babington House in Somerset, to offer a professional's view. Well, I think these houses need to be houses and lived in. You know, mm. the awful thing is when they become offices or institutionalised in a way. I mean, then yeah. they just die. Because mm. a house like this would have had, you know, probably hundreds of people living in it. It just needs that energy. Yeah. And I think, as well, they were designed to evolve. That's mm. the whole point of them. You know, mm. you've got to make a house lived in and warm and somewhere that people are just incredibly happy to be. Mm. Clearly, Elmore has great potential. But it will take months of work and many thousands of pounds to transform it into a stylish cookery school. And also, this is the, obviously the hall. Do you see this still being a scenario which would be very much dominated by the portraits or not? It would be sad to lose them, I think, because mm. I think that's the identity of the room. Mm. But it's how to, in some way, make it an ongoing story mm. so that it feels more continuous. Mm. 
Before Anselm embarks on such a massive commitment, Ruth has to know that he's up to the job. She wants him to do a trial run of the cookery school in two months' time. I want you to get six or eight people down here to spend a 24-hour period going through the motions, if you like, yeah. but just to give you some feeling of what it's like to have people in the house, what their expectation is of you, of the facilities, mm. what they want out of it, and you can use them for feedback. Yeah, I mean, I think, it, you know, I don't want to sort of embark on this whole thing without having actually... No, I mean, I think it just gives you a like. flavour. You will need to dedicate your life for a certain period of time to doing mm. this in a sort of structured way and yeah. you have lived your life in a fairly unstructured way That's and true. this is going to be a huge culture change for you it really is there's a seriousness to it yes this, um, yeah there is no there is that's uh that's uh, yeah no i realize that but you're up for it but i'm up for it anselm heeds ruth's call to arms and takes his clutter to auction if it goes well It'll give him immediate cash flow with which to start the refurbishment. That's in the kind of passageway as you come in through the side entrance, and um, I think it's made a huge difference because it's just kind of opened up the space. But my mum came in and was like, what have you done? 12.50 I'm bid now. At 12.50, it's your bid in the room. Anselm has 120 lots under the hammer. On the phone at 12.50, going at 12.50. Like nerve -wracking. Anyone else? Including a 19th century bookcase, which makes six times its estimate. It's down to 327, you've got a sewing box. 600, 700, 800, 900, 1,000, 1,100, 1,200, 1,300. The small and uniquely beautiful sewing box has sparked a bidding war. 1,700, 1,800 and is sailing way above its 500 pound estimate. There, 1,900 in the room, anyone else? 2,000. 3,000, 3,500. 4,000, 4,000 pounds on the telephone at 4,000. Anyone else at 4,000? 4,000, going, 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 going. I got 4,000 quid, and it's supposed to get 500, 600, so. That's the wrong place. But yeah, of course. Hell, four grand. Cool. That was that was really good. We got um, just shy of twenty-six thousand quid. So um, yeah, it's cool. There's a few things that did really, really well. There's a few things that weren't sold. There's a few things that just did really badly. But on the whole, yeah, results. <laughs> Anselm's next stop is Cork in Ireland. The auction has given him the cash and confidence to push ahead with the trial, but he hasn't even been to a cookery school, let alone run one. In preparation, he's come to Ballymaloo, where celebrated chef Darina Allen runs her world-famous cookery courses, using produce from the school's organic farm. Anselm's sister-in-law, Kate, is going to run the Elmore trial. So she's joined him at Ballymaloo. I'm making short crust pastry for a um, Normandy pear tart. So let's have the egg yolk in there and the egg white in there. That's right. Get out of there. The students do everything from scratch. They go, go out with the gardeners to bring in the produce in the morning on a rota base. That's really important because yeah. that actually, you know, it gets them in touch with how things grow and really thinking quality and so on. This place is incredible. I, I, just, I just think if you spent a lot of time here, it'd be, it'd be so good for your soul. There's no waste. It's all holistic. The hot local area is being used. It's all fresh. It's all organic. And, you know, that's really what I wanted to do at Elmore. Look at that. My first pear tart. This trip to Ireland and the auction have sparked in Anselm a genuine passion for the cookery school. Well done. You're yeah, no, I'm, I'm on your way bit. to being a master chef. Well. <laughs> but will it translate into a successful trial when Ruth returns to Elmore? You're a greedy little boy as well as everything else. I agree. That's my second mouthful. You've had about four.
first visit to Elmore, I found a young man who was almost traumatized by the weight of his ancestry. And then on my second visit, I found a young man who was frankly behaving in quite a cocky fashion and living in what seemed to be more like a hippie commune. On this, my last visit, I'm hoping to find a young man who's grown up a bit and who's actually put in some work and has set up a cookery school trial. And if he's done that, that's going to be very good news. The kitchens of Elmore are once again alive with activity as the cookery school staff prepare food for the big day, including vegetables grown by Anselm's friends in the revived kitchen garden. Hello. Hello, Welcome hi. Welcome to Elmore Cookery School. Oh, is it that good? <laughs> well, kind of. It's coming together. It's yeah. good. That's How are you? Good to hear. I'm absolutely fine. Do you know, there's an indefinable but very significant change about this because it used to feel like a sort of antiques repository and now <laughs> it feels like a house. It actually yes. doesn't feel like a mausoleum anymore. There's something definitely animated here. Well, there's a, there's a lot of life and activity going on here, so... Um, I don't know, maybe it's just you can feel the vibe of the place. I can feel the vibe! You know, so... <laughs> uh, how much better oh, yeah. does this look without that fucking <laughs> shit in it? Yeah, no, it's, it's, um, it's made all the difference. It and that big really molly has. Gone. Somebody it else really has now got has. it. Gosh, <laughs> change of pace. In the old kitchens, an even greater transformation has taken place. This is it. This is what we've done. Oh my God. <laughs> well, this isn't like old Christmas decorations, is it? It certainly isn't, no. <laughs> what a change. I even like the roof all being like that. <laughs> this is yes, amazing. That's the one bit we haven't sorted, but the rest of it is. Um, is this is amazing. It's proper, and, isn't it? And, well, it's just, you know, we knew it was going to be a wonderful space, and it is, and how much you've been able to put in, and it still looks airy and spacious. Yeah. And I really like the whole mix of sort of rustic, and look at this food. I mean, it just looks so beautiful. Look at these fresh bolotti beans. And what about the students? Um, the students are arriving in just under an hour. How, and how many? So we've got eight of them. Right. We've got a mixed bag, and it was, it was really easy to find them. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Um, so, uh, I'm... Slightly nervous about them arriving because that's there's a whole sort of it's not yeah. just about the cookery school it's about them coming to yes no and use be the rest my guest of the house. and use the house exactly. so there's been yeah. a there's been a lot of preparation yeah. Yeah, so for them house. but I mean that side of it, I mean I'm sort of treating it as if you know as if they're coming as my guests mm. to stay in this house well done star pupil again. Uh -huh. <laughs> Good. Very I good. Yeah. So, no, since, I love since, it. since the uh, telling off at the. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Time. No. Well. Like, yeah. Yeah. The bedrooms will be refurbished before an official opening, but for now it's just homely touches. We've got fruit and water and um... clean towels for. Our oh, guests haven't done a huge amount. Well, there's not a great deal you can do. No, but really. I mean, that's a nice gesture, isn't yeah. it? You're acknowledging that you have got guests in the house, which is very and lovely. And we've got flowers. And flowers More flowers again. in the garden. Yeah, yeah. that's nice. That's nice. That's offset some of the heaviness of the room. It's, uh, you know, lovely. And so, how many rooms are being occupied? Um, seven rooms. Yeah, I've and you're what... cool about the whole notion of people being in your... Yeah. Not enough having the house full of people, so yeah. it's good. The, the obvious thing, you know, really, is that you haven't had to spend any money on putting people in these rooms, apart from pick a few flowers and some bananas. Yeah. Um, and yet you were going to spend all that money on doing the stable block up. So if this no. does work, I mean, the investment is so much... It's going to make a huge difference. The students are arriving. Um, welcome, this is it. Elmore is open to guests. Elizabethan stairs, which are... 16th century. For the first time in its 750 year history. Kind of like the backbone of the house, really. And William, you're in this room here. There he is. Where were you living before? Just in a normal house? I was living in a bungalow in so just near Nailsworth. Oh, wow. No, no, this won't do at all, Anne, so I want another room, please. Oh, uh, really? <laughs> <laughs> well, I've got plenty of others. <laughs> it's, it's, this, this is a particularly good one, though, I have to say. This is a. Yeah, it's for Anselm, it's a test not just of the cookery school, 
Thanks and welcome. Thank you. But also of his ability to be master... It's amazing. ...and host in his own home to these strangers and cookery fans. It's been written by Ella Guys and dates back to 1903. The students are all cookery buffs found by Kate. It was in here. Oh, it was in here? Yeah, there's a whole load of stuff in this room and this was a kind of uh, scrapyard and we found it in amongst all the stuff. And the first recipe is a family one. I just was looking through thinking, wouldn't it be just lovely to, to do a recipe from her book? And I was really thrilled when I saw Podded pea soup, and um, I've just modernised it a tiny bit because we're going to serve it with some poached quail's eggs. We've podded loads of peas. She wouldn't have used garlic, I'll tell you that. <laughs> oh, she wouldn't have used garlic. We should not have used any garlic. It fell out of favour in that kind of Victorian sort of very proper time, and I probably because of garlicky breath. Whereas we're going for it today. Yeah, because... no, absolutely. But um... you, you said at the beginning, Kate, modern twist on it. We've got some beautiful blackberries that were just picked from the bushes. Does anybody want to put them into their coolie? This is all really encouraging. The students seem to be really enjoying themselves. Pop a lid on it and let it simmer very slowly for 20 minutes, OK? OK. And there's a real sense of purpose and energy about this building. I think this is looking very good. It's late. Anselm takes his place at the head of the table. And they've actually been here since the Norman Conquest, basically. And plays host to his students. He, he, he's, he squandered tons... Because there, there were actually five estates, and he squandered four of them. Ah. What's his name? Barclay. Barclay. But the hot topic is who will inherit after Anselm. You better get siring children quickly. Well, yeah, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm doing my best. <laughs> <laughs> but would Uncle John approve of his heir's use of Elmore? Sir John, who died last year, that, that's, um, that's him as a, um, as a seven-year-old. Although it appears to have been a success, one day won't save Elmore. Does Ruth think Anselm is in it for the long haul? I have to say, I think you could fritter the whole thing away. It's day two of the cookery school trial at Elmore Court. Part of a money-making plan to secure the future of the Cotswolds estate, owned by DJ and some guys. Last night, the students stayed over at Elmore. Businesswoman Ruth Watson Hello. wants to know how Anselm felt about sharing his ancestral home with strangers. Hello, Anselm. Hi, Ruth. You're doing more household duties. I love it. Good well, to see a man working, especially yeah, every, every in the domestic now and again, zone. <laughs> I put my, my silver service apron on, or whatever it's called. So how did last night go? It was... Uh, it was very good. I yeah. think everyone had a great time. Yeah? Did you have a great time? I had a good time. Yeah, it was fantastic, actually. Um, I loved it. It was... Uh, I mean, I got up this morning to find two empty bottles of whiskey, so... It was... <laughs> it was... Uh, I think... It, I a think very it, good time. I think it was a very good time. And you're obviously setting up for lunch. Yeah. So, are we all eating? Uh, we are all eating. Everyone, Mum and Dad are going to join us. Oh, fantastic. Um, hopefully you're going to join us. Yes, please, yes. And uh, we've got gazpacho and then... We've got some salmon that Dad caught with a served on wild some... Wild salmon? Uh, wild salmon. Oh. As is cookery school tradition, the students will also be eating what they make for lunch. Absolutely wonderful. Look at that beautiful wild salmon. This was gutted um, by Anselm's mother, Lady Guys, and um, this morning, Ansi was running his fingers along here and pinboning it. Just, just about ten minutes ago, I think it's so nice you've got this kind of little hubbub of stuff mm. going on and clinking mm. glasses and people chatting and stuff, and it's really nice. Yeah. It's really so good. So the apprehensions have been... I'm, I'm enjoying being host. Lunch and Sir Jamie's salmon is served. And they all, I got it on the neighbour right up in the north of Scotland. 
We put most of them back, but this was the unlucky one. <laughs> and I hope you're all enjoying it. Mm. It, took me, it took me ten minutes to catch, and it's going to take about five minutes to eat. <laughs> <laughs> could I just... Um, <laughs> Sir Jamie, excuse me, Jamie? could you just stop talking, please? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Good, you're <lucky. laughs> Could I just please raise a toast to Kate, who's done the most fantastic job in the school, and I know yes, the students yeah, will have yeah, a lovely yeah, time, yes, and yeah, Tam, yeah. who's really enjoyed having this whole thing being here. So I think a huge success. So I think glasses yeah. should be raised. And so all these guises who are looking down on from the wall would be delighted to think we were doing something which is going to keep the house together. Mm -hmm. And uh, we all hope it works. I'm sure it will. <laughs> With the cookery school a success, all Anselm needs is a successor. And if I can embarrass Anselm hugely, as if I would. What about an air? I've just got to find the bird, haven't we? <laughs> I've got to find the bird. There's no we about it. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm working hard, Ruth. But I am sure. <laughs> Anz is a charming host. He's an absolutely charming man. And he's taken to the cookery school like a duck to water, as they say. I think it's, it's the way to go with a house like this. So many family houses have to be sold now so many have been sold um, and and so you don't have a sense of that history at all anymore and this place is still full of paintings wonderful artifacts um, and in order to pay for that to make it pay for itself you have to compromise and and live in today's world well listen thank you all so much for coming it's been brilliant having you here the trial is over by going ahead with the cookery school, Elmore could generate £500,000 in annual turnover. Financially, it's a success story. But in the six months since Ruth arrived, has DJ Anselm finally become Lord of the Manor? You've been here for just over a year now. How do you feel about living here? I love it. Whereas before it was like... Um, you, know, I, you know, I love it here. I feel... I feel I feel comfortable. comfortable and at home here, mm. so it's good. It's just as well, it's a, it's it your is your home. It is my home. In terms of what we've done, my concern is how dedicated you will be to actually driving it on. Um, I, I, I think it's going to be great, and I've got no, no doubt in my mind at all that I will do it, and I'll do it well, and it will be a fantastic place. I think you can have a great time here. I think Elmer could be a huge success story, and you as its master could could be absolutely wonderful. I have to say, I think you could fritter the whole thing away. I don't think you will, but I think you could. Absolutely, because... I could. Yeah, no, totally. I and, mean, I'm and aware that's of that. my but, I mean, only point is, you've got to have an aware of, awareness of the fact that that's something that you could one could. As long as slide that is at the forefront of your yeah, mind. Of course. Yeah, of course. Yeah, no, totally. The last thing I want is for good old Uncle John to be turning in his grave and saying, "I told you so." <laughs> yeah, I yeah, I wouldn't like that either. But I'm doing the best I can, and I'm not showing it off, and I'm not mm. being a, you know, a dick with it. Mm. And to be honest, I'm sharing it. The thing is, there's no money, so that's um, that's made a big difference. Just a socking great house. Just a fantastic, lovely house. <laughs> yeah.